Well, hello and welcome to the House of Valentina. I'm Valentina and today I'm going to be sharing my top tips for styling up your kitchen. These are the things that you guys have been asking for lately. You wanted to know, well, how do I style up my kitchen? My friend Grace told me recently that all she had on her countertops was a toaster and she had no idea how to style up her kitchen. So I hope today will be super helpful. I just finished styling up my kitchen so it's feeling nice and fresh. So let me share with you what I've done. I hope you love today's video and find it super inspiring. Don't forget to hit subscribe and uh, make sure you let me know down in the comments if these uh, tips are something that you feel like you can do in your own kitchen or if, uh, yeah, maybe you're gonna be like, no, no way, lady. <laughs> I'm leaving my paper towels on the counter. <laughs> All right, let's jump in. Since I've already mentioned the paper towels, let me just share with you what I don't do. I do not store paper towels and cleaning supplies and things just out on the counter. It's a pet peeve, actually. It's something that I just... They sell all these nice little holders and things and it, it makes you think that you're supposed to put your paper towels out on the counter. Don't believe them. <laughs> if you want to have a nice holder for it underneath the cabinet, that's different. But I do not ever store really ugly supplies like this. I never store this stuff out on the countertops because I just think it really just it's ugly. <laughs> I don't want to have to look at it. So I never store practical items like, uh, you know, paper towels, cleaning supplies, things like that. I tuck them away and put them underneath. So if we're putting a lot of the non-essential items away, what do you do with the items that you would consider really essential? So for my friend Grace, her toaster, I'm assuming that if she's got the toaster out, that it's something that she uses all the time. Like if you toast your bread every single morning for breakfast, uh, and then you might even use it again at night, you might wanna think about having that appliance to be sitting out. In an ideal world, we would all have really great pantries where we could fit all of our appliances, one of those really great coffee bars where you open the doors and it's like, oh! Yeah, ideally we would all have that, but not all of us have that. So sometimes we have to put those appliances out on the countertop. So I have my Nespresso machine sitting right here. This uh, kettle is something that he uses twice a day. We use the Nespresso machine. I use it twice a day. He uses it once, our daughter uses it. It's something that gets used constantly. So it was well worth spending a little bit more, first of all, because the Nespresso machine is amazing and the kettle is too, but they also look really pretty. So instead of just buying basic appliances that you know are gonna be sitting out, just buy something really pretty, and then like our microwave is tucked away in the pantry. It's ugly, It's I don't even want to show you, it's so ugly. It's basic and it's fine because it's tucked away and I don't have to see it all the time. Next up, let's talk about wood. One of the things that I like to add into my spaces is a little bit of wood. If you have a lot of wood cabinetry, you may not need as much wood to accent in your kitchen, but a lot of us have the painted cabinets, a lot of us have a solid, a white has been really in and so adding some wood in makes a huge difference so at the moment i've got this beautiful cutting board that's sitting here it just leans against the wall this is also really handy because i really hate the outlets showing uh the two that i've got i've got two outlets that show back here they drive me crazy and i think i'm going to have them actually moved because it's making me that nuts i hate the outlets being out but you know moving the outlets, especially if you're renting or you know, you're know you not you're not in a place to have them moved, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take a cutting board and I will hide it. So it adds wood and it hides the outlet so it's not so ugly. I also use these, I've got one sitting out right now with the pretty bread. I've got it really nicely styled up with the little, uh, the brie container. We're gonna have some brie tonight. I've got the salt and pepper grinders out and I've display, used it for display as well. Another thing that you can do is you can also add in wood axe through your bar stools. I've got those wood bar stools. Originally I had some black ones and it was black on black which is a look that I really like as well but adding the wood in definitely helped it to feel a lot softer and it helped it just to have a little bit more of a natural kind of feel in the space and I think it just really softened the whole kitchen. Another thing that I absolutely love to do is that I love to hang art in the kitchen. Okay, so I realize that not everybody has these big open kitchens like I do. I took all the cabinetry down. I went for a more Scandinavian look in here. And so I have room for a humongous piece of art in here. 
I just really like the way that art looks in the kitchen in general. And I will say that right now you're seeing my kitchen, which is a lot more modern. Whether I'm styling up a kitchen that's modern or I'm styling up a kitchen that's really traditional, these are the exact same tips that I use for everyone. I might choose different accessories that really go with the kitchen, maybe accessories that are a little bit more traditional. Uh, I like to juxtapose styles, so actually knowing me, I'd probably add some things that were a little bit rough, uh, artwork that was just a little bit more, that has like a really drippy kind of uh, textured look to it. I like the balance of that with the glossiness of the cabinets. And so think about your own style and the kind of art that will either add to the style that you already have and stay in that style, or maybe you could use your art to juxtapose a different style in. Uh, at times I've had a piece of art underneath here. At the moment, I'm in a minimalist moment. I know, I know, my regular subscribers are like, didn't you say that maximalism was coming in? I know, I know I said that recently. That doesn't mean that I want to do that. <laughs> It just means it's coming in, okay? For me, in the kitchen, I just prefer a more minimal style. I would rather have one big piece of art. I might put something up here, probably won't for a while. I just like things quite pared back. But artwork really does help to just add a little bit of character. If there was nothing on the wall, it would feel really empty right now. So a nice big piece of art can make a really big difference. Or if you've got cabinetry, you could also put a little piece of art just sitting down on the countertop. You could have a little easel for it. You could have a little picture frame. You could use an abstract piece of art. I do that all the time for my clients who have lower cabinets. I'll just put a little piece of art just right underneath the cabinets and uh, on the countertop and it just looks amazing. So have some fun, check out some different types of art and figure out what you just really enjoy and what will really enhance the entire look of your kitchen. One of the things that I always, always do in a kitchen is I always add greenery and or florals. First of all, I think a beautiful vase just looks amazing. Again, I've got a really open space right here, so I have a huge, beautiful uh, uh, vase from Pottery Barn. At the moment, I've got some faux greenery that's in there. This is some faux olive branches because it's the dead of winter and I don't have a lot of branches to take. But knowing me, I'm gonna fill that as spring hits. I'm gonna have a big branch in there and I like to be able to switch that out seasonally. Now, if you're gonna put the big branches in there, you might wanna think about putting a smaller cup or vase down in it with water in it, but right now it's faux, so I don't even have to worry about that. But I know a lot of you are going to have cabinetry that comes down, so don't worry. You could either take a big piece like this, put it on an island if you have a nice big island. For me, I have a peninsula, so if I didn't, ha if I had cabinets back there, I would take that piece and I'd put it coming up here in the foreground of your view into the kitchen, and I would use it up on the peninsula. So you can kind of play with the placement of things. You can also use smaller vases and smaller greenery in areas where you don't have all the height. It looks amazing to add a vase with flowers. Get them at the grocery store, clip some things from the garden. It's a lot of fun, and it really adds a huge amount of fresh it just really infuses that feeling of nature and some that life. That is a really refreshing thing to have in your kitchen. Okay, the other thing that I always, always do is I always display fruit. Now, I know that a lot of people like to display lemons. I never do that. I never display lemons. I never display uh, red apples. I don't display oranges just in general. Maybe over the holidays when I get into like a really festive mood and I want like cloves and oranges. Like that's pretty much the only time that I will ever use that color. Normally what I do is I use something that's a little bit more neutral and I use greens. Okay. So right now I've got this humongous bowl that I found at Pottery Barn. I love it because it's beautiful and sculptural, but it's got cantaloupes in it. And I gotta tell you, those cantaloupes, they smell so good. I keep walk, walking by and I'm like, can we just film that video? Cause I really wanna eat those cantaloupes. <laughs> I like to have some melons, some big melons in the kitchen. So I think they look amazing. It's fun if you have a really big piece and you've got the space to go big on your accessories and then fill them with big fruit like that. Uh, then in a smaller bowl, I've got the pears in that, and I think that they just look absolutely amazing. I love green pears. I'll use brown pears, and you can't see it from where you are right now. I've also, 
I've also got this beautiful bowl. It's made out of marble. I got this at Crate and Barrel, and inside of it are limes. So I think it's fun to display fruit. I think it really feels fresh. I will switch these out per season. A lot of times I'll have uh, pumpkins or like acorn squash in the fall and then over the summer it's really fun to put summer fruits in here. I don't want my counters to be cluttered with all of it so I just choose which ones I'm gonna have out. While we're talking about displaying and that sort of thing, let's talk about some of the items that people tend to have out on their counters that I might not do that way. So what happens is a lot of times I'll go in people's houses and they've got big trays and, and I, I love looking at this style. I love like the hominess of lots of uh, all of the olive oils and vinegars and lots of salts and things. And in an ideal world, I, I've put those things out and I try that style and I never like living in it. I don't like to have a lot of clutter. So I don't put the little uh, lazy Susans that you guys see with like all of the condiments inside of them and some of the cooking ingredients and spices. I don't like that kind of stuff. I don't like the busyness of it. I don't like the chaos that it creates. For me, I just like a really calm and clean kitchen. I do actually cook in my kitchen. Now that's something that always comes up on these videos because someone's like, she doesn't use that kitchen. I'm like, actually, I do. <laughs> I do actually. I do do quite a bit of takeout as well, but I do actually cook in my kitchen. I just have, sitting in this drawer, I've got, and I'm, in this drawer, I've got all of my spices, okay? So I just want them tucked away. And when I go to cook, I just grab the olive oils and different things. Sometimes I'll switch them out and I'll have olive oils decanted in pretty bottles. I'll switch things out and I'll have that out. I do like to put salt and pepper grinders out. I just feel like it's really sculptural. It's a really pretty piece. Uh, these are some more marble ones that I got at Crate and Barrel. Uh, I think they just look absolutely gorgeous sitting out. And so I'm really looking for ways of displaying, can you tell? I'm looking for ways of displaying everyday items in a way that feels elevated, it feels sculptural, and it feels really sophisticated. Ooh, and ooh, 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 I gotta show you this too. I almost forgot this. This is one of my favorite things I'm doing right now. I've got this beautiful little uh, lidded round box that I found at H&M and hiding inside of it. Ooh, we've actually almost used them all. I'm hiding my pods from my Nespresso machine. So think about some really cool vessels for things like this where you can hide in plain sight for stuff that you use all the time as well. So we've kind of been alluding at this, but I did want to just give it a second. I think minimizing clutter is a really big deal. So I don't try to put too many things all over the kitchen. A lot of times I see other designers, they have a more is more mentality towards styling up a kitchen. I think whatever style that you really like is what you should do. For me, I find that it just ends up feeling chaotic. And when I'm cooking, I want lots of clean space to be able to actually get in here and cook. So I don't want the countertops covered in a bunch of stuff. I don't want to over display. I think having fewer items actually makes it feel more expensive and also a lot calmer. That's just my personal preference and you guys can let me know in the comments what you guys think. But yeah, I prefer not to have a lot of stuff sitting out. So I don't want every, like we said before, I don't want all the fruit out. I don't want like multiple vases and lots of stuff sitting everywhere. Usually um, I'll get some herbs and I usually have some herbs and some pots. At the moment instead I'm displaying some really, piece, really beautiful pieces in here instead but I don't like it when I feel like I have to kind of like work like this in the kitchen. So I would just prefer to have less things, just some nice things to look at and just minimize as much clutter as possible. Another thing that I like to do is I like to add lighting to the kitchen. So there's lighting in several different ways in this kitchen. We always turn the lights off for videos because it kind of throws the balance off and makes it harder for you guys to see everything. But usually when we're in the kitchen, I've got the upper sconces, those are usually on. I've got a light here over the stove that I also leave on. I've got a lamp that's sitting down here and I also have the overhead light, which is also on a dimmer. So I've really lit this space from the top all the way down. Under mounted uh, lighting can really go a long way to help you light up your space. But also think about just an just a simple lamp sitting out on the countertop makes a huge difference because it, it fills in your low light. 
So I know a lot of us took out the upper cabinets and a lot of us have open shelving. You might want to think about some pendant lights. You might want to think about uh, having some sconces over those. You can even light underneath those shelves if you've got open shelving. You can use those little puck lights to put them underneath there. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to bring lighting into your kitchen, but it's really important to have lighting. Of course, because it adds ambiance, it adds mood, it makes the space just feel warm and really attractive. And I love to dim these lights in the evening and have, you know, when it's time for cocktails and stuff, this is a kitchen that I use for all of those occasions. So whether I'm over here and the kids are all in the kitchen and we're having a good time and making a big pot of spaghetti and garlic bread and it's chaotic and everyone's kind of running around, the lights will probably be a little bit further up and then in the evening when my husband and I we just want to sit and have a cocktail the lights get dimmed and the light and the mood in the evening is just chef's kiss it's gorgeous so think about your lighting maybe add a chandelier if you don't have one something that's bigger more substantial this thing spreads the light out all over the kitchen and that's why I put that in rather than the original one that was just a originally it was those fluorescent lights and if you've got those just get them out <laughs> I was like I walked in here day one and I was like that's going <laughs> that cannot stay okay we're not having that fluorescent light in here uh, literally it's annoying because you have to patch the ceiling but that was one of the first things I ever did in this house even before we renovated the kitchen or anything I had the painter come in, we took down that, switched it out. It's really easy. People think that there must be something like hidden under there or it's gonna be complicated. It's not. <laughs> if you've got those lights, just take them down. The other thing that I like to do is I like to put some non-kitchen items in. So at the moment, I've got a gorgeous vase. This is one that I bought in Copenhagen when we were there last spring. I just love this piece. Sometimes I put stuff in it, but honestly, it's so beautiful by itself. And I like to have a place of honor. So for me, it just really delights my heart to walk into my kitchen and see this. And so I like to have non kitchen items in here. I've also got this really great brown wood ring and I think it just helps. I always say this, I feel like a lot of times kitchens, bathrooms, laundry rooms, we take such a utilitarian approach to them and it's too functional. I mean, the kitchen functions just fine, even if I have some pretty things displayed. So I instead treat these rooms like I do any other room in the house, and I put some decor pieces in them. And that way it feels like a treat to come in here. I absolutely love coming into this room. It just feels like an extension of the rest of the house. I don't feel like I'm going to the kitchen. I'm. It's just an extension of the living room. It's, it's an extension of these spaces, and I just absolutely love it. So um, I've also got the cake plate, which is a more kitchen item, displaying a piece of, uh, displaying a beautiful cheesecake, which everybody wants to eat. And I'm like, nobody touches that. <laughs> We've got a video first. Everyone's like, oh. So it is nice to use a cake plate like that. It's a little bit more of a kitchen item and balance it with some non-kitchen items like the vases, some of the little knots and things. And I think it'll just help the space to feel a little bit like a living space rather than I'm only coming in here to cook. One of the other things I like to do is I always, this is kind of my, my, my thing that I'm kind of known for. <laughs> I always like to display cookbooks and uh, people always tease me that I'm very particular about what it's pointing at and that's actually true. I really try to pull something out that looks really yummy. I tend to just lay it down on the counter. I've got one of those little clear acrylic things you could display it. I don't want it to feel too overly decorated. So I think sometimes I'll use it and sometimes I don't. So if you like to have a little bit more um, something up off the counter and, and adding some height would be really nice in your kitchen, uh, those clear, clear acrylic book holders, they're really inexpensive on Amazon. You can find them there. You can also do some of the wood ones that kind of have it sitting up. But for me, I like the sort of it is somewhat decorated, right? We're not we're not kidding ourselves here. The kitchen's decorated. This is sort of like, oh, I do actually use the kitchen. <laughs> I've got it open to uh, grilled French toast and peaches with whipped cream. Uh, yum, my, my mouth is now watering. This is something that I plan to make and it really inspires me to think about some recipes. It gets me excited about it and it just looks really pretty sitting out. The final thing that I do is that I put a rug 
always into every kitchen I ever do. And you guys are gonna laugh because I never had a kit. I never, oh, this kitchen. This kitchen is a little bit of a pain in the butt. And I'm actually thinking about making a few tweaks to it because the bay windows are just annoying. And trying to put a rug into this kitchen is really hard to do. Most of you, 99.999% of you, are not gonna have a weird bay window in your kitchen. So laying down a rug in the kitchen, easy peasy. If you've got a galley style, put down a great runner. If you've got something open more like this, put down a bigger rug. I, I just laid this rug down and I was like, let's just try a bigger rug. Because I've tried some that were smaller. I've tried some that were just over here. I've tried it all. This space is just awkward. So this time I just decided to bite the bullet and go big. This is an inexpensive one just from Ikea. I gotta tell you, these Ikea rugs, they work hard. I've had them sitting underneath breakfast tables. I use them all the time. They clean up really well and they're really inexpensive. So think about putting something from Ikea, check out Amazon as well. And um, I've got some rug recommendations on my Amazon you guys can check out. I'll leave that link down below, but put a rug in. Don't put one of those like squishy, <laughs> oh my gosh, those like commercial looking things. Like wear a pair of sneakers if you go to cook, if you need some support for your feet. Uh, don't put one of those like, they're like squishy made out of like a plastic. Ooh, those always creep me out. They always feel dirty and I'm like, oh, don't make me pick that up. I always ask the homeowners, I'm like, can you please just, oh, we'll just take that out. And I'm like, oh, it's so gross. They just get kind of dirty and they're, I hate them, so there you go. That was a little bit too much <laughs> Valentina, but I mean, that's the reality, all right? I don't like those things, they're creepy. Don't do utilitarian in the kitchen. Go for something that'll really help that space just feel really special. And you don't have to spend a lot of money if you're worried about spills. Just go with something from somewhere like Ikea and you'll be amazed. These things hold up to use and you can just scrub, uh, we have scrubbed everything out of them. <laughs> the dog peed on it, uh, there's been spaghetti sauce, there's all kinds of stuff that's been on these rugs and you just clean it up and they're great. I hope that these tips and tricks have been something that just got you inspired and excited about giving your kitchen a really great refresh. These are easy things that you can do and you don't have to spend a ton of money, a few key little items and your space is gonna look amazing. So I hope you'll wanna hit subscribe and stick around. We're gonna be having some more tips and tricks videos coming out so let me know down in the comments what areas you are struggling with and we are going to take your comments and we're gonna make video content for you. So let me know what you're struggling with and uh, you know, the next video that comes out might be the one made just for you. So thank you so much for joining me and I cannot wait to see you in the next one. I'll see you then. Bye.